Welcome to 10 from Ted. There has obviously been a whole lot that's happened since uh, the last time I shared some thoughts. Uh, I'm going to include more than 10, to be honest, uh, because our team across the country has been publishing really powerful pieces, op-eds in publications from Seattle to Chicago to Baltimore uh, to a host of online publications about what Hamas has done using sexual violence as a tool of war, about the challenges on campus, about the fact that anti-Semitism is not just a problem for the Jewish community, and about how much more the entertainment and sports industries can do to confront anti-Semitism. I'm gonna share all of their work because I'm really proud of it. Second, I'm just recording this after doing an interview on CNN today, which we'll also share below. Wolf Blitzer wanted to talk about Donald Trump's comments in which he said that Jews who vote Democratic hate their religion and hate Israel. And quite frankly, there is an effort to turn all of this into partisan issue. Everything that we're enduring now as a Jewish community, and as I, and as I told CNN, uh, we criticize those comments because they're divisive and they're dangerous. And the hatred and the anti-Semitism directed at the Jewish community is coming from all sides. And we should not be part of political campaigns. But I also told him that it's really important that, that we not focus on politics and statements of political figures alone, that we remember why we're having these conversations at all at a time when Israel is at war against a terror organization that slaughtered over 1,200 and took over 250 hostage and continues to hold 134 hostages uh, in captivity, deep underground, in horrible conditions for now 165 days. Uh, it is hard for us to continue to focus the world's attention on what's really important here, which is defending the Jewish people and defending Israel. And statements from political figures that politicize the support of the Jewish community for one party or the other are unacceptable and they make it harder for us to do our work. Uh, next, earlier today, I was asked a number of questions about Senator Schumer's speech last week and, and, and the fact that AJC was very clear that we don't think that elected officials in the United States should interfere in the politics of an ally, and in this case, an ally like Israel that is in a war uh, of self-defense after the most horrific day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. And, uh, and I think it's important for us to be clear in where we stand. Again, the challenge for our community right now is coming from all different directions. And we can't allow politics to interfere with our ability to speak as one community in defense of the Jewish people and in defense of Israel. And as AJC is a fiercely nonpartisan organization, we are going to continue to call it like we see it. Finally, I want to finish with one more observation about the hostages. As I said earlier, it's now been 165 days as of today. When I raised this issue in every meeting I had in Washington last week with members of the House, members of the Senate, Democrats and Republicans, senior officials in the White House and the State Department, uh, I had a pin, a yellow pin that I normally wear uh, that I would be wearing now, but I met with an ambassador who asked what it was for and while I explained what it was that I, I was asked if if I could share where to get it, I passed my pin on to that ambassador who promptly uh, affixed it um, to their clothes. Uh, that's why I still have this, uh, this wristband that I wear all the time. We're constantly thinking about the hostages. We're constantly working with government officials to elevate their stories so that the world understands that we must bring them home. And on this day 165, when there are 134 hostages and uh, there will be meetings of the White House soon between senior Israeli and senior administration officials. Uh, when they are together, they should acknowledge that of these 134 hostages, six of them are American citizens, and everyone in America should know who they are. Idan Alexander and Omer Nutra, 
Sagi Dechel Hen and Keith Siegel, the Hirsch Goldberg Poland, uh, are all hostages that are Americans, that hold American citizenship. And every American should be demanding their release and the release of every hostage that Hamas is holding. And for Itai Hen, who we recently learned, sadly, passed, we've been spending so much time with Itai's family, and our condolences go out to his family. But Itai's remains and those of Judy Weinstein Haggai and Gadi Haggai that Hamas continues to hold that makes it impossible to fully move forward with mourning. Those remains should be delivered immediately as well. The rest of this 10 from Ted will include lots of the other things we've been saying. Let's remember as these talks go on about a temporary pause, as we acknowledge that Israel must defeat Hamas everywhere, that includes in Rafah, that in every conversation we have, we remember the importance of bringing the hostages home now. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.